We're calling this meeting to order. This is the meeting of the Board of Commissioners for Weber County. On this, the 16th day of March 2021, we welcome you here, whether you're here live or whether you're uh, on uh, Zoom or or even joining us later, sometime in later on. Uh, we're grateful to have you here. We live in a wonderful county. Today, we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Miss Brooke Stewart. Our invocation will be given by our attorney, uh, Brian Barron. And our thought of the day, well prepared and rehearsed, will be uh, given by Commissioner Jenkins. Ms. Stewart. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for this beautiful morning. We thank thee that we could be gathered here together to discuss the uh, business of the county and of the, the people who reside here. Uh, pray that thy spirit would be with us, that thou would guide us and bless us with wisdom, uh, that we may uh, better serve thee and better serve uh, those people who, who live here in this county. Uh, and these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Commissioner. Commissioner Jenkins. <laughs> I'm sitting here a second ago and the Commissioner Harvey reaches over and says, so, you know, you got the thought today. It's like, oh, geez. <laughs> and I've, uh, I've read the uh, agenda and I've read the uh, consent items. And I didn't read the fact that I was given the thought. Anyway, uh, tomorrow is the 17th of March. And for everybody, normally that's a St. Patrick's Day. But for those who live in Plain City, that happens to be the uh, anniversary of the incorporation of the city. Uh, well, I say the incorporation, the establishment of the city. They didn't incorporate it back then. And uh, the city was founded on 17th March, 1852, five years after the saints came into the valley. So uh, it's interesting that in five years, uh, we had a group of uh, folks who were in Lehigh that couldn't find enough ground down there that they felt like they could farm. So they come up to uh, Ogden and they talked to uh, uh, Farr. I'm trying to think his first name. Lauren? Lauren Farr. That's right. They talked to Lauren Farr. And they said, well, uh, where can you get some ground out here? And they said, you know, he says, there's a piece of nice flat ground out west of town here. The only problem is you can't get water to it. And so uh, they went out and uh, they said that the uh, sagebrush was so high that sitting on a horse, it was you could touch the top of the sagebrush. So it was five, six feet tall. Well, that let them know that the ground was fertile and that they could... Uh, uh, go from there. So water was the issue. Well, over the next years, they, uh, they uh, created a levee. And uh, the levee went up through far west. So it went out uh, on the north end of town and then up and through far west and started south. And as they would uh, go along there, they would pick up different streams that would come down the mountain and would come out to uh, there, and they'd capture that water and shoot it out to Plain City and use it for irrigation. Well, uh, as water would flow, of course, in the springtime, they had plenty of water. As the summer hit, they got almost no water. And uh, it uh, didn't work really well. And eventually, they got to the Ogden River, uh, uh, over or similar to where the pond is right now. And uh, the water would get to Plain City all the way from there along that uh, the Plain City Canal, they called it, and then out to Plain City. And uh, that's how uh, our little town got uh, serviced and created. <sighs> Later on, if you don't have regular water, you can't row crop because row crops take a late season water. And uh, so that water... Uh, eventually, when they created Echo Dam, uh, 
the folks from Plain City got together with those folks and said, look, we'll turn our water shares into you because we don't, and then we want to get involved in the, uh, uh, it's the Weaver River Water Users Association that created Echo Dam. And that's where Plain City gets their uh, water from now that they irrigate with. And uh, it allowed it to go to a late season, so then you could raise potatoes and things like that that you have to uh, irrigate later in the fall of the year. Uh, we couldn't do that without that. But anyway, so uh, when you get to the 17th of March and you think about St. Patty's Day, think about Plain City on that same day, too, because that's the day we were created, and it's a great little community. Well, thank you for that history. What a nice thought that is. There you go. What a nice thought. Appreciate that. We have uh, item number E at Lake Echo. On our agenda is public comments. Are there any in the galley here or online that would like to uh, talk to the commission on in any particular? None here locally, I see, or uh, Shelley, I see none. Commissioners will move on to item F like Foxtrot on our consent items. I'll read those. Number one is a request for approval of ratification of warrants 3603 through and including 3626 and 457.15. 44 through and including 457 312 and number 73 in the amount of $745,169.68 dated on the 9th of March 2021. Item two is a request for approval of warrants 3627 through and including 3657 and 457 313 through and including 457 438 in the amount of $1,254,046.38. Item three is a request for approval of purchase orders in the amount of $440,077.07. Item four is a request for approval of ACH payments to U.S. Bank in the amount of $181,399.53. Item four, five, excuse me, is a request for approval of minutes for the meeting held on March 2nd, 2021. Item six is a request for approval of new business licenses. Item seven, a request from the attorney's office for approval to surplus two chairs. Item eight is a request to declare part of parcel 17-091-0008 as surplus real property. Item nine is a request for approval of the from the Weber County Tax Review Committee for approval of the following refunds. Parcel 0582-0033 in the amount of $275.35 and, and Scottsdale Farm. $396.65. And item 10 is a request for approval of retirement agreements by and between the following individuals. Brent Pechtel, Camille Hurst, Robin Skidmore, Leslie Sokolik, Norma Toscano, and Joanne Wengren. Commissioners, comments pertaining to any of the items of consent? <clears throat> Mr. Chair? Please. Uh, the question I have on this surplus property that we're getting rid of, uh, this says part of uh, Township 8. Uh, well, where, where's the general area of that? I can see that this is just some uh, a survey discrepancy. 17, yeah. It's 17-091 is, I think, the area he's looking to. So this is 8 look. north, 1 west, up, up just... Uh, adjacent to North Fork Park. Okay, I wondered. County. So we've talked about this once before. We have. This yeah, was this, we, we okay. resurveyed that property, and right. the county owns more than we thought we did. So we're, right, yeah, that's great. I just want to make sure I was aware of that. Terrific, Mr. Hatch. Will you give us some comment on this? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's talk about purchase orders. We issued forty-two purchase orders for four hundred forty thousand dollars. Uh, we had two at about 20% of that amount, or $88,000. One was for Fleet to purchase a service truck and a bed uh, for, for the garage, not a sleeping bed, bed for the truck. Uh, and then $87,000 for the paramedic fund for to purchase life packs. We had two items at 16% or $72,000. One was for the library, and that is primarily for the landscaping maintenance throughout the year, as well as some bu building maintenance and supplies. The other is for Homeland Security, and that will purchase the Ambubus 2 transport kit, as well as sandbags. 
Uh, we nine uh, percent or forty one thousand dollars is for the jail, and that went almost or will go to, almost exclusively to the water treatment system, and then seven percent or thirty two thousand dollars is for IT to purchase network equipment. We had two check runs between the last uh, commission meeting and this one. The first one was on the 9th of March. We issued 194 checks for $745,000. One third of that amount, or $235,000, were ramp awards to the cities. 14% or $101,000 was for corridor preservation, and that went exclusively to purchase land in Larson Lane in Harrisville. 13% or $95,000 is for the library, and that was primarily earthquake remediation and utilities. 8% or $61,000 is for the jail to purchase food, building maintenance, uh, utilities, and fingerprinting equipment. And then 5% or $39,000 was for dispatch, which was for telephone service and building maintenance. Now for the check run for this week, we issued 157 checks for $1.3 million, 59% of that amount where $737,000 was to purchase uh, the warehouse for the sheriff's office, as well as construction for the parking lot here at the Weber Center. 8% or $105,000 was for the jail to buy food. Um, the uh, policy manual uh, licensing and training, uh, as well as utilities and um, PR. And then 7% or $82,000 is for the sheriff's office, and that went to purchase dash cams. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Hatch. Commissioners, are there any questions for Mr. Hatch after his presentation? None for me. Thank you. Great. I'll entertain a motion then. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that we uh, approve item F1 through 10, the consent items. I have a motion. I'll second that. Great. I have a motion and a second. I'll place that motion for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item G is uh, our action items now. This is a first reading, commissioners. Mr. Horton, Mark Horton, will be the presenter. It's a request for approval of an ordinance of the Weber County Commissioners of Weber County authorizing the seasonal closure of Avon Pass Road and Ant Flat Road. Mark Horton. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. Morning. Horton. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm bringing this forward as the first reading for Avon Road and Amp Flat Road. Uh, we've had some issues in the past up on Amp Flat, and I knew there was an ordinance, or I thought there was an ordinance. When I got looking into it, there was an ordinance written in 1995 to close Avon Road during the winter time for recreational use only, but there was nothing for Amp Flat Road. Uh, we have had some issues with people driving around the barrier trying to get across in the winter, but there was really no action that could be taken. I reached out to Mr. Barron on this, and it was decided that instead of writing a separate ordinance, it'd be better to just amend the first one to include Ant Flat Road and Avon Road together. One of the reasons we're doing this is the Monte Cristo area is a major recreational area in the wintertime for snowmobiling and other activities. State Parks grooms the area and grooms up SR 39 all the way into Rich County. That trail system actually can go up into Paris, Idaho through Garden City. And so we're one of the objects of this is just to make sure that we are uh, preserving that for winter time activity. Questions for Mr. Horton, commissioners? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have a, I guess, a clarification. So one of the reasons this has taken place is the winter use that goes over into, as you mentioned, Cache and Rich County. Is that the primary reason for the closure of, of the Weber County side? No, the other reason is the maintenance of the road in the, in the winter time. Okay. Uh, the problem we have is the maintenance isn't upkept. And so if people try and drive across that, when it's muddy, they tear the road up because it is a dirt road. And that was the reason Avon Road was closed in the winter time. So part of the reason is for maintenance costs. So, so when would you anticipate it, both of those roads to be opened? Those are not set to date. Uh, UDOT closes SR39 November 15th, no matter what. Right. We try and keep those roads open as late as possible. So it's determined by county roads or state parks when there's enough snow that they can start their grooming operations. Okay. So All there right. is no set date. No other questions? Thank Mr. you, Chair. Commissioner. Mr. <clears throat> Jenkins. So uh, you question the opening uh, commissioner, when I was a young boy, uh, we decided we wanted to go fishing uh, 
and we talked my dad and my uncle into taking us fishing. <laughs> and we were pretty young at the time. <clears throat> and they'd heard about a new uh, reservoir up on top of Monte Cristo that uh, uh, had fish in it, and we decided we'd going to go up there. So if you remember, fishing season used to open the first Saturday in May right. every year. So on the first Saturday in May of whatever year that was, we took off and uh, headed up to uh, Monte Cristo. Well, when we got to uh, uh, where that Amp Flat Road was, <clears throat> there wasn't a gate across the road then. And we went, uh, we just kept going and going, and that road got smaller and smaller. And finally, we got to the point where the, uh, the trucks that were blowing the snow out stopped and backed out. So we come to a wall of snow right there in front of us. And I remember we unrolled the windows of the car and got out on the, not the hood, but on the top of where the, the car was. And we stepped from there onto the snow straight across. And uh, I was just amazed by that, that uh, the first Saturday in May, that the snow level up on Monte Cristo would be that high still at that point. I, that had to be well over six feet tall. Anyway, that uh, is amazing. Thing. I had a similar situation three or four years ago, July 4th. I was up on top of Monte on work in shorts with a bicycle in the back of the truck, and the <clears throat> snow was as tall as the hood on the patrol vehicle. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Well, there you go. So I do have a question here. Yes. Uh, that Ant Flat Road, there's some uh, cabin uh, communities up in there. There are. Yeah, don't those guys uh, use that road to get their cabin communities all winter long? By snowmobile. Yeah, so it's snowmobile only, huh? Yeah, that road's been closed to vehicle traffic for as long as I can remember. And I've been going up there since 10 years old. So this is nothing new? This is nothing new. We, okay. we're, that's... we're just simply writing it down now. Okay, that, I, that's I all appreciate we're, that. We're, that's all we're doing. And just for clarification, uh, we did change some verbiage where Avon does have a gate at the bottom, but Ant Flat Road does not. And that will be up to state parks to berm that up and block it with snow and post it with proper signage. All right. Yeah, we're not really changing anything. We're just writing it down now. Good. Thank you. Mark. Any other questions, Commissioner? No. You ready I've for got a motion? Uh, not yet. I've got a couple of questions. Will you just can you just confirm, please, uh, that uh, that road is closed from the other side? So I've already reached out to Cache County and we're both on the same page with this. Great. Just wanted to make yeah. sure. That's my only question. Now I'll entertain a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd move to approve the first reading of the ordinance of the County Commissioners of Weber County, authorizing the seasonal closure of Avon Pass Road and Ant Flat Road. First reading. And I'd second that. First and great. For, uh, we got a first and a second. Uh, since we're to this point, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Thank you, Mr. Horton. Just for uh, Brian, just for my knowledge, on a first reading, do we have to have a motion? Yes, I think it's good for you to pass it by a motion on the first reading as well. We've done this to just make sure it's correct. Thank you. Well, Ms. Stewart. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our first, uh, our next item, number two, is a request for approval of local transportation funding Agreement by between Weber County and Roy City to establish terms related to the Roy City 4300 West project. Ms. Stewart, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, like you mentioned, this is an agreement with Roy City and the county for the 4300 West project in Roy. Um, the project intends to widen and improve 1.1 miles between 5700 South and 4800 South. Uh, the project was recommended by the COG and approved by the County Commission as part of the 2019 transportation priority list. Uh, this agreement is just outlining the terms related to the sales tax funds that were programmed for this project. Uh, Roy City has committed 73,000 of their own local funding towards this, and we are just here requesting your approval of this agreement. I'm happy to answer any questions concerning this project if you have any. Commissioner's questions for Ms. Stewart? Brooke, uh, these are the uh, projects that were approved by the Waycock Transportation Committee last year. 
Yeah, in 2019. So we right. skipped 2020, but yeah, the last the last yeah. program cycle okay. that we had. Yeah, the last time we'd mm-hmm. met as a group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Uh, when I went through this list, uh, they all looked familiar to yeah. me, and I thought that was probably the case. Great. Commissioners, any other questions? I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that we approve item G2, which is the, uh, well, in fact, This might be faster if we have her present all of those and approve them as a group. Mr. Barron, are we able to do that as a group thing like this or where they're listed separately? Yeah, I don't have any concerns with that. Great. Ms. Stewart, then if you're okay, Commissioner Frohr? I'm fine with that. Yep. Ms. Stewart, will you present items three, four, five, six, please? I'm happy awesome. to. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so, yeah, the next one on the agenda is the Far West City 4000 North Project. Can I trouble you? I'm getting messed. Can you... Remove your yep. mask while you're, so we can hear you a little better. Sure. Thank you. There you go. Absolutely. So the Far West City 4000 North project is the next one on the list. They intend to widen 0.6 miles of 4000 North, um, starting from Highway 126 down to the city boundary, which is approximately 2900 West. Um, this project was also approved as part of the 2019 transportation priority list. Far West is committing 436000 in local funds to go towards this project, and they've also received surface transportation funds um, to p- complete the project along with the local funds um, that are included in this agreement. Uh, so this agreement is just outlining the terms related to those sales tax funds that were programmed, and I'm happy to answer any questions on this project before I continue, if you like. Commissioners, any questions regarding the Far West City project? Thank you. Ms. Stewart, go ahead with Plain City, please. Hey, the Plain City has the North Plain City Road Project. It was also approved as part of that 2019 transportation priority list. This project is to widen and improve 0.4 miles from um, of North Plain City Road from 2750 West to 2900 West. Uh, the city is committing 100000 in local funds toward this project, and this agreement is just outlining the terms related to those corridor preservation funds and the sales tax funds that were programmed. Do you have any questions concerning the North Plain City Road project? Commissioners, questions for Ms. Stewart regarding the Plain City contact, contract. Go ahead, Ms. Stewart, regarding West Haven City. Hey, yes, West Haven City has the Midland Drive project. This one was also approved as part of the 2019 transportation priority list. Uh, this one, um, the project is intending to initiate corridor preservation efforts along that Midland Drive um, corridor in West Haven City from 1900 West to 3600 South uh, to support possible advancement of the widening project by UDOT. Uh, the um, project was recommended in 2019, like we talked about, and um, this is just outlining the corridor preservation funds that were awarded uh, to this project. And will you roll ahead, please, with the 3300 South, please? Absolutely. 3300 South, this project intends to improve one mile from 2700 West to 3500 West. Uh, they have committed 500000 in local funds towards this project, and this agreement is outlining the corridor preservation funds and sales tax funds that were programmed. Commissioners, we've, we've now received presentations regarding two through and including six from Ms. Stewart. Uh, any questions for her on any, any of them in totality? None being heard. We do have a motion and a second. I'm looking to you, Commissioner Jenkins, who made the motion to amend your motion to include all those items. Yes, I would do that. Great. Commissioner Frohr? Second. Great. I'll place that motion for all items two, three, four, five, and six now for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Mr. Myers, you're going to need to present those uh, because they're different, uh, two separately, if you would, please. Uh, The next one is uh, Gary Myers. He's going to request an approval for a contract buying between Weber County and Sunrise Engineers for an Upper Valley Sewer Study. Gary Myers from our engineering department. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, commissioners. Can you hear me okay with my mask on or for it off? Project, thank you. You got it. Hey, for your consideration today, I have a contract with Sunrise Engineering. They were selected through our procurement process to assist us, the county, with a sewer study for the Upper Valley. Uh, We did this, uh, Chad, remind me, how long ago was this? It's It's been a little over a month just ironing out the uh, the details and everything, but uh, yeah, have that for your consideration and approval today. Any questions you might have on that? Commissioners, we're, I think we're somewhat familiar with this. Commissioner Frohr, any questions? 
Yeah, I just want to clarify for the record. So what is the scope of this sewer study? What, In other words, what do we hope to accomplish? Or the, at the end of the day, what, uh, what are we asking them to provide to the county? So there was a study done years ago. Uh, this, this study will kind of take into account the same information that was evaluated as well as the current growth we've seen up there since then. Evaluate uh, the potential need of locations for sewer treatment in the valley up there. Okay. Does this take into account value, uh, evaluation of the current septic tanks and infiltration that may be in the valley? Are they looking at that or? Yeah, they'll, they'll look at that as well, too. Okay. And, and come up with some recommendations. Great. Thank you. No other questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Frohr. Commissioner Jenkins, any questions? No questions. Great. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I would move to approve the contract buying between Weber County and Sunrise Engineers for the Upper Valley Sewer Study. Motion? Second. And a second. Place that motion for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Mr. Myers, will you uh, please go with item number eight, which is a request for approval of a contract by between Weber County and UDOT Region 1 to allow UDOT and the county to partner on the cost of installing storm drain under the railroad crossing at 4700 West and 12th Street. This is somewhat substantial. Mr. Myers, go ahead, please. Yeah, you bet. Really excited about this one, commissioners. Uh, the, currently, there is a pipe under the railroad tracks out there along 4700 West that, that uh, is currently there. However, we've done some investigation along with UDOT. That pipe is clogged with debris. The challenge is, as that pipe goes under the railroad tracks, there's an angle bearing change on that pipe, which is a natural uh, bottleneck, if you will, for debris and, and stuff that flows down that pipe. The other challenge is the pipe that's there is significantly undersized. So w through a project that UDOT has identified, they've come to us for a little bit of participation, a little bit of assistance in funding this project. Uh, that amount is the 125,000, which is, uh, actually, in my opinion, a great deal for the county considering the cost that it takes to jack and bore a pipe under a railroad track similar as this. Uh, in addition, this will upsize that pipe from its current size, which is 15 inches, I believe, up to 30. So we're getting a huge benefit in, in this area in drainage capacity. We've actually had events as recently as about five years ago where this pipe created a problem for us in this area. So uh, it's been on my radar when they approached me about participating in this. We were very excited about it. So any questions you guys might have on this one? Terrific. Question I have, please. Sure. Chair. Uh, so this is not in our budget. This is something that we'll uh, have to put in it. it. Well, it would come out of our uh, stormwater budget for the county this this money that's where we're coming oh that's true this has come out of stormwater yeah we do have funds in there correct okay. that's correct i'm all right sure. with this so uh there's a percentage of this do you know what portion we're sharing i don't have a total number yet as they ha i haven't seen a final engineer's estimate if i had to throw a number at this commissioner i'm guessing it's probably in the 350 to four hundred thousand uh, dollars for the pipe the jack and bore and then the additional structures that are involved in this. So, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on this item for uh, item number eight, commissioners. I would make a motion, Mr. Chair, that we approve the uh, contract between Weber County and UDOT for the drilling of the uh, pipe on 4700 West. And 12. Great. I have a motion? Second. And a second. I'll place that motion for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Thanks, we appreciate guys. your work. Thank yep. you. Ms. Freegang, our Center of Excellence. The next is item number nine, a request for approval of a memorandum of understanding by and between Weber County and Weber Human Services Foundation to allow Weber Human Services Foundation to pass through a grant to Weber County. Melissa Freegang, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, good morning. Good morning. So it in July, it will have been two years that the Center of Excellence has been um, doing our work. We'll, we'll be two years old. And a great deal of our work has been um, really to serve those families that are experiencing intergenerational poverty. So the work there, um, I think there's a lot of confusion because a lot of people understand poverty. They understand nonprofits and government services that are traditionally funded right on temporary 
assistance, uh, safety net funding. Um, but there's no money and no funding for intergenerational poverty. So our approach is really to be very child-centric, and we're trying to change these long-term outcomes for children. But because there's no traditional funding or funding programs for intergenerational poverty versus situational poverty, the work that we started implementing two years ago, which was an innovation, was to really be child-centric. And that means that we have to incorporate two generational strategies. So we have to build the capacity of the parents who are raising these children, who, by the way, experienced poverty as children. That's the definition of this intergenerational poverty approach. So what we've done is worked with those nonprofit and government providers that get that uh, short-term funding for services, and we're accessing those services um, or teaching those families and those parents how to access their services strategically, very specifically focused around family resilience. So how do we build their capacity to actually change the outcomes for their own children and help those, these families become economically mobile and then change the cycle of intergenerational poverty? So far, um, the work that we've been doing in uh, intergenerational poverty, we've served 157 participants, 99 of them children. And again, we're strategically wrapping services around every single individual, so there's no duplication of services, so that they have direct access, um, so they can navigate some of these uh, really big uh, programs like the Office of Recovery Services for Child Support and those sorts of things. We have actually have 28% of them that have enrolled in post-secondary education which is a pretty big number uh, when you think about it. And that's both the youth and the parents that are trying to change the course of their family resilience. And we have a 35% average increase in family resilience. So it's a non-traditional program, obviously. We're really trying to leverage all the dollars that come into Weber County to our really great nonprofits and government services. The point I'm trying to make is that we have to get really innovative around the funding streams. Mm -hmm. We have partners um, like the LDS Church who recognize that there's traditional poverty work um, and funding streams, and then there's intergenerational poverty. In February of 2020, we approached the Weber Human Services Foundation um, to make sure that when we have some of these non-traditional funding streams that we're able to have that money go towards this uh, specific initiative. Um, in December, we were granted uh, some monies from the church to scale our program specifically, and they chose to uh, pass that money through the Weber Human Ser Services Foundation so that we could actually continue to scale our program. Um, and as you know, and I'm sure Commissioner uh, Jenkins will talk about, currently we're funded through the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. We lost 40% of our families last July because of the requirements, the federal requirements of who you can serve um, because it's temporary assistance for needy families. So um, my point is, is that we found this innovative way. This contract is uh, between the Center of Excellence and the Weber Human Services Foundation to continue to pass that money through. We would be accountable to really both organizations and we'll be reporting out to them. Um, but this just uh, codifies our ability to do that. Great. Commissioners, uh, questions? Uh, Commissioner Jenkins, this is in your portfolio. Any, any comments here? The only <clears throat> comments I have is uh, the fact that uh, the way some of these donations come down, we don't want to give them directly to government. We really like to give them to a nonprofit. And so uh, <clears throat> as a result, this uh, donation comes this way, and uh, they have to make an, uh, an agreement with us to give us that money. No, uh, that's okay. This all works out. We appreciate uh, what the church is doing for us here. You know, this all uh, relates to uh, a study that Stuart Reed did years ago on intergenerational poverty. And uh, we've been able to do really good things with it. Uh, when the state took funding away last year, they replaced the funding they took away with TANF dollars felt like that was probably good enough for us. Well, the requirements, TANF is temporary assistance for needy families. And when we got that money, uh, it just didn't transfer across evenly. 
And so as uh, Ms. Free, Ms. Free Gang mentioned, 40% of our families we couldn't service, so we lost 40% of our families. So if you look at uh, our program, there was a substantial dip last year in the amount we could serve, and it's because we lost some, and then we had to re-put others on. and It, was, it created quite a mess for us, a, a large enough mess that I'm not sure we'd even take TANF if they offered it next year. Uh, that's that, it was. It did that much harm to us. Uh, really set our program back a little bit. And uh, so anyway, uh, we're grateful for this money and what's happening here and uh, what uh, Weeby Human Services is doing this for us is passing it through. And uh, of course, that came through the Center of Excellence that we created. She's in charge of. So it all worked out great. And I just want you to know that the program's working out really good. And that uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we organized it well the way we did. Terrific. Thank you. Commissioner Farrar, any comments? Yeah, just great to see the success. Obviously, the, any of the funding that, uh, that the Center of Excellence can receive to help these families and people in, the, in this situation uh, are well-deserved. So appreciate your efforts in this, Ms. Freegan. Sure. Melissa, I, my last comments before I'll entertain a motion is I know that you personally are the one that does a lot of this. You uh, are one-on-one -on -one and, and individually meeting with families, getting right to the grassroots, and God bless you for doing such a wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that we approve the contract between the memorandum of understanding between Weber County and Weber Human Services for this money. Motion. Second. And a second. I'll call for that, or I'll place that motion for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10 is a request for approval of a resolution appointing a trustee to the board of Weber Tater <laughs> Cemetery District. This was an uh, item for Stacy Skeen. Is she on uh, line there? Yes. Good morning, commissioners. Hello, Ms. Skeen. Go ahead, please. So the West Weber Taylor Cemetery District had a position on their board that expired December of 2020, and they asked me to post for the board vacancy. It's one position, and I received one application that you have before you from Marlon Kirby. Just asking for your approval to appoint them to this board. Commissioners, uh, Marlon Kirby, is that... Uh, we, we, again, we listed it, only one applicant. Any questions Correct. regarding that, to set that cemetery board? None being heard, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve resolution. 11. 11. You know, normally uh, we run into Terry Hancock at the gym, and he keeps us up on all these. But Terry hasn't yes. been there for a while because of all the COVID issues. But anyway, I'd make a motion that we uh, approve uh, resolution number 11. Second. I have a motion and a second. Fatima. Commissioner Frohr. Aye. Commissioner Jenkins. Aye. Chair Harvey. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Skeen. Thank you. Item number 11 and number 12 are from Brian Benyon. We'll hear those separately. Uh, number 11 is a request for approval of the contract by between Weber County and Adam Hensley. Oh, boy for indigent defense. And actually, we've got Mike Bowes here to do the presentation. Is that okay with you, Mr. Barron, since you're listed? That's fantastic. Uh, Mike, welcome here. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. It's good now, to be Adam here. Hensley, I really would love it. Here's a perfect example of uh, of how, never mind. I know Adam, and I'd love to just tease the heck out of him, but I, I'm biting down hard on my tongue not to go in. Good guy. We Where think so. So we have uh, one of our attorneys in the juvenile court uh, is retiring, and so we took applications, and uh, we had four individuals who participated in reviewing those and interviewing applicants. It was universal or uh, uh, unanimous that uh, that Adam be uh, awarded a contract to take over his case load there. So, commissioners, I can speak to the character of Mr. Hensley, and he's a great, great guy. I don't think we'll have an issue here at all. But any questions for uh, Mr. Bowes on this? No. Nope. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd move to approve the contract buying between Weber County and Adam Hensley for the engine defense. I have a motion. Second. And a second. I'll place that motion for vote. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Bowes. Are you going to make the presentation for uh, item number 12 as well? Yes, I am. Uh, let me just read that aloud, please. It's a request for approval of an amendment by, to the contracts by and between Weber County and the following individuals for indigent defense. Andrew Hayward, Rebecca M. Voimus, Randall M. Marshall, Michael Bowes, Marianne Ellis, Martin Gravis, Jennifer Clark, Jason Whittison, James Retallick, Gage Crowther, I don't know if I can trust that name, Richard T. Williams, Ammon G. Nelson, Emily Adams, Sharice Bakalski, and Frazier Johnson. Mr. Bowes. Yes, uh, these contract amendments deal with two issues. One uh, it incorporates the change in compensation, compensation for this year. We appreciate that. Uh, they certainly appreciate that. Also, uh, there's a clause inserted in the amendment that uh, provides some incentive uh, for the attorneys to cooperate a little more fully in uh, providing data for the system that we use to collect that, that helps us to track caseloads and, uh, and provide that information to the uh, Indigent Defense Commission from the state. And so uh, we thought while we're dealing with the compensation issue, uh, this would be a good time to put that in there as well, just to, to address that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowes. Commissioners, you'll remember that back in our budget hearing, we had to make some changes regarding state statute. And uh, th working through Brian Barron in our attorney's office and uh, Mike Bowes, I think they've done a great job uh, addressing this. It's fair, and I appreciate the work you've done on this, Mr. Bowes. Commissioners, I'll entertain any questions for Mr. Bowes regarding this particular item. None being heard, then I'd entertain a motion to approve this action item. Motion to approve item number 12 on our uh, agenda, G12, which is amendments uh, to the contracts by and between Weber County and the indigent defense attorneys. Thank you. I have a motion? Second. And a second. I'll place that motion for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Stand by one second just to get my bearings. They're all contracts, and that's great, Mr. Bowes. Thanks again for the work. Thank you. you. I appreciate your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's good to see you. You too. Item 13, commissioners, is a request for approval of an agreement by and between Weber County and EDA architects regarding preliminary site evaluation and feasibility study services for a new Weber County building and location. Scott Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, as you're aware... If you would project very loudly, please. Thank you. That may help. The people online have a difficult time hearing, that's why. Okay. Uh, commissioners, uh, as you're aware, uh, the county's interested in possibly identifying some outcomes that are associated with planning and constructing a new Weber County building somewhere in Ogden City. Uh, to identify these potential outcomes, a study would need to take place, and the study would involve performing a needs assessment conducting a preliminary programming and site evaluation process, creating a high-level project cost estimate and a development timeline. Uh, EDA Architects of Salt Lake City has come to the county and has offered to perform these services actually at no cost. Uh, the deliverables that you'll see in the contract that you have before you, uh, they consist of a synopsis of all the research information that's discovered through their uh, through their work, uh, a needs assessment and space needs summary, diagrammatic site development plans, a comparative site evaluation matrix, and a preliminary budget and schedule. In addition to these deliverables, EDA would be scheduling up to five different meetings to facilitate, to, excuse me, to facilitate this whole process. And they're estimating that this process would take approximately four to six weeks to complete. Thank you That's very much, have. Mr. Mendoza. Commissioner Frohr, any comments here? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So first off, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Mendoza. He's actually the one that uh, suggested we have this conversation with EDA architects, and they've offered those services, in my opinion, at uh, for an opportunity that the county would have a hard time replacing for uh, anywhere close to the amount that they've 
agreed to work for us. And quite frankly, this is the study, this is the information that, uh, that we would need as a county to make the right decisions, proper decisions, if we, in fact, decide to move forward with a um, new location. So this is information we need. It's at the right cost, uh, which is virtually zero for the county. And um, I would uh, encourage your support Great. for this. Thank you. Commissioner Jenkins, any comments here? No comments. Great. Then I'll entertain a motion for approval. Mr. Chair, I would uh, move to approve the agreement by and between Weber County and EDA Architects regarding preliminary site evaluations and feasibility study services for a new Weber County building and location. Very good. Thank you. Is there a sec second? Great. Uh, before I place that motion, I just, uh, I believe it's Tom at EDA Architects there that helps us there. He's done such a good job for the county and other capacities, and we appreciate him. I'll place that motion now for vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Commissioner, thank you, thank Mr. You. Mendoza. Item H, like hotel commissioners. Commissioner, comments. Either one of you have anything you want to share? Since, since 1852, nothing more fills the gaps out there. On March 21st, 1973, which is only a few days away. I was married to my <laughs> wife. And on that day, it snowed 40 inches. You know, oh. It was, uh, we couldn't get out of town. We could, <laughs> people would come into our wedding and they'd say, it's still snowing out there, it's this deep. And it snowed and it snowed and it snowed and it just wouldn't stop snowing. And the power was out in Plain City for seven days. Uh, because of, and I think we got a little lake effect going north. But anyway, 40 inches. So that's my comment. Well, happy uh, anniversary. In the future. That's great. Mr. Frohr? Well, s since I was educated on the other important uh, event that happened on March 17th, uh, I think it's, we need to recognize St. Patrick's Day being an important holiday tomorrow, and it's uh, coming from at least half the Irish descent. And uh, my mother's birthday was March 17th, and being a McCarty, directly a uh, direct descendant from Ireland, it's an important event, important holiday in uh, our family. So enjoy it, and everybody be safe out there. It's great. Where are the, where are the green? Just a reminder, this will be a green day tomorrow. Commissioner Harvey. That's, I yeah. appreciate that. As a colorblind person, I'll yeah. get some help. So, Commissioner. Yes. I might mention now uh, we talk about that. <clears throat> in 1972, <laughs> I was in the Army, and uh, we'd gone into uh, we'd gone into New York City for uh, uh, a little R and R, uh, and we were walking along. There was a group of about five of us in our uh, dress uniforms and. Uh, we we all we come walking up this street and all of a sudden right there in front of us was a, a parade going on <clears throat> and everybody was dancing having a good time and these gals come along there and they grab hold of us uh, six guys that were uh, uh, in the army <laughs> they pulled us right out in the middle of the parade and we walked two or three blocks with this and thought man this is pretty cool and next thing you know the parade was over and it's like well where are we and right there was St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. And so I was in the St. Patrick's Day Parade wow. once for two blocks. <laughs> uh, it was kind of cool. Famous. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, commissioners, for your comments. My last, my last comment is, uh, as you know, last week uh, we didn't hold a commission meeting. I was uh, lucky to be out of town with my sweet wife, Jane. For 35 years we've been married. Thought I loved her then. Boy, is it sweeter now. I love you, Jane. I'll entertain a motion for item I, like India. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second, we're adjourned. <laughs>